Hi everyone, my name is Josh Munson and I'm the Program Coordinator with Global Connections. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's webinar, Brand U 2.0. We have Rebecca Cooney from the Murrow College as well as the Director of the Online MA in Strategic Communication Program here at WSU Global Campus with us tonight to conclude her series about digitally branding yourself across digital and social media platforms. Before we start tonight, I'd like to remind you about the chat box. If you scroll your mouse over the screen, you should see a few options that come up at the bottom. Feel free to click chat and the chat box should pop up and you'll be able to um, type in comments or questions um, throughout the webinar. This is meant to be a conversational webinar, so please feel free to type your questions throughout the webinar or wait till the end and we'll have a question and answer period with Rebecca at the end. So without any further ado, I would like to welcome Rebecca. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Cooney. Um, I hope my video is coming up. I'm not sure I can't see it on this side. Um, welcome again to uh, implementing your personal brand in the digital space. And this is a follow-up to uh, Brand You 1.0 where I talked about your story in the digital space. Uh, tonight I'm gonna focus more on how you can create your online profile that reflects the image you wanna project to the world um, using the tools that I introduced in the first um, installment, but I will be uh, reminding you of those as we go through here. Uh, so just uh, for those who uh, weren't at the first installment, I am Rebecca Cooney and I am a clinical assistant professor in the Murrow College. Uh, I teach primarily public relations and digital media. I am also um, the online MA uh, director and we have an emphasis in strategic communication. And then I also serve as faculty advisor for the Public Relations Student Society of America chapter here at WSU. So just a, a refresh on um, some statistics that I introduced in uh, part one um, and, and just some friendly reminders on the importance of having a really solid uh, personal brand in, um, on, your, on your profile. A um, couple of reminders. So two in five employers use social media to screen candidates. Uh, and that's a pretty staggering stat when you think about um, you know, how, how much social media is gonna be looked at as you are seeking employment opportunities and trying to sell yourself uh, online. 43% uh, of employers said that they did find information on um, these profiles that made them decide not to hire a particular candidate. But on the flip side, one in five hiring managers said that they found reasons to hire a candidate from their social media profiles. Uh, and that's gonna be based on um, how people, you know, basically behaved online. Did they use derogatory language? Did they complain about their current employer or past employer? Um, did they have photos with them, uh, you know, drinking or using drugs? Um, these are things that they're looking for to get an overall impression of an individual's character and sort of how they are going to be um, a good fit for their organization. So just a, another um, one last reminder on the statistics side. Uh, when researching candidates online, employers are looking for um, information that supports uh, their qualifications for the job, whether or not the individual has an online persona. Also, um, what other people are posting about uh, that person, and then also looking for those red flags that might come up on um, reasons that they might not hire the candidate. So just a, a, I'm also gonna, it's a little bit of a refresh from what I talked about in the first uh, brand you. I just wanna make sure that I have everybody kind of on the same page. So there's a thing I call the uh, personal brand arsenal, uh, which is basically your story, so how you're going to um, articulate who you are and, and what you do. Your image, which are your photos uh, for both profile and um, banner in particular. And then also how you want to sort of, you know, act in that digital space, how you want to perform in the digital space. So um, the main message I have for, for all three is actually consistency, be consistent. So your story is gonna have your 16 second sound bite, um, you know, write the story of where you, you were, maybe before you, you know, were in your, your current uh, educational path, um, where you are today, what you're trying to achieve, 
and then what you hope to become long term. Your image uh, is uh, recommended that you invest in a really good headshot uh, and also um, the, you know, shots of yourself or shots that represent kind of your personal brand and, and theme that you're trying to, um, to put out to the world uh, that are of good quality and um, of good taste. And then also uh, your level of engagement is really deciding um, how you want to engage digitally in order to demonstrate to potential employers uh, some of your, uh, your potential. So your tools, the things that you have to work with in this arsenal, you have your social channels. Uh, and I quoted this last time as well, and that Carly Overmeyer, who is a senior VP at Barocas PR in Seattle, um, she suggests anyone looking for employment should have profiles in Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. It's also recommended that you create an online portfolio that provides an opportunity for you to showcase a little bit more about yourself, your goals and your expertise, samples of coursework or professional work, um, as well as contact information and um, a, a way for them to contact you. And then also as you get further into different roles, especially as you get into uh, professional roles, you're going to end up on bio pages and staff pages, whether you serve um, on a committee as a volunteer or you're on a board or you're on a staff page uh, with your employer. It's important that those are also consistent with the rest of your digital profile. So your name, title and student status, your skill sets, um, accolades, awards, honors, what you're looking for professionally, personal passions, anecdotes. These are things that you can put onto your bio and staff pages that further tell the story of you and um, who you hope to become. So I want to get into the reinvention of your online persona. Many people have a profile set up, of course, on Facebook. Um, maybe they started something on LinkedIn. Um, maybe have Twitter, maybe Instagram, but aren't necessarily coordinating those and, and having them intersect and using them really to the best possible uh, way they can in their, in their um, online presence. So just an FYI from uh, GoGolf, um, they have a, a, a piece on pre-employment screening um, that the most used social networking sites to screen candidates are actually Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and in that order. Uh, which I thought was really interesting. I would have I would have put LinkedIn on top, um, but as it turns out, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn is the order. So something to be very aware of. So your profile, um, just a reiteration, social channels are recommended for Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Uh, but in those profiles, and these are your kind of basically your about pages, about me pages. Uh, an opportunity to showcase your talents and demonstrating that depth and breadth of you as a potential um, employee. And then also um, where you can influence how you appear visually and verbally on channels you don't manage. And that's why it's important on those bio and staff pages and volunteer and serving on boards of directors, any of those pages where you're going to be represented. Um, it's, it's important that you uh, are able to provide them with a quick bio, maybe a headshot, that sort of stuff. Thing that uh, that way you can control that message a little bit better than if they write it for you. So I got um, the question actually last time and I get this question from uh, people all the time and that's the big question of personal versus professional. How should I manage my social media networks between my personal and professional connections? Should I have multiple Facebook sites? Should I have multiple Twitter accounts? One personal, one professional? Well, I read up a little bit on it, trying to find um, you know, something more specific on recommendations. I found uh, this nice graphic on the top five drivers for personal and professional networking uh, to really kind of give you a little perspective on um, if, you're, if you're more on a personal track, what you're trying to kind of focus and look for versus if you're on that professional networking um, and you know, what your goals on spending time versus investing time. So I think that the better question is, how do you maximize the value of your networks? And what I say about this is that your, your personal network should be used for social connections and entertainment, where in professional networks, people want to learn more information and connect um, with resources. So think of like Facebook versus LinkedIn. But regardless, your online presence is going to either attract people and, and keep them interested in wanting to learn more, or it can repel if you're not careful. So regardless, you need to be mindful of how seamless the web is. So even if you have a personal Facebook page and a professional Facebook page, um, you can 
both of them are likely to be found and both of them could be looked at and criticized. So if you think you can kind of go carte blanche and, uh, you know, political and, and uh, you know, inflammatory language and complaining about your boss on one public um, Facebook page and you think that that won't be seen because it's your private, um, just be aware that there are ways around it. And uh, so it's something to be very, very aware of and very cautious of. So let's talk first about LinkedIn, and I have several slides on LinkedIn because I, I, I found this great infographic that walks um, users through the best practices of, of LinkedIn profile and maximizing their presence there. And also I found a, a quote um, that I've actually used in the past that talks about employers actually do look on LinkedIn for college students as a way of pre-screening them. Um, they call it uh, passive uh, searching. And it's a, it's, so it's, just know that even as a college student, no matter if you have um, no real applied work experience or you have um, some applied work experience and you're, you're kind of moving up and getting your, um, either you're finalizing your undergraduate degree or moving on to a master's, know that um, having a presence on LinkedIn is important regardless of where you are in your career path. So let's talk a little bit about the perfect um, profile blueprint. And I do reference, this is from lifehacker.com uh, and it's the LinkedIn ultimate cheat sheet infographic. And there's actually quite a bit more on this infographic that I don't include. Uh, so I definitely encourage you to go and look at this and, and maybe even um, print it out as you're really trying to refine or develop your LinkedIn profile. So it starts at the top with um, your headline um, and your name and just kind of making a decision, are you going to list yourself as a student or are you going to list your current employer? Uh, it's really up to you. It depends on um, how you wanna you know, represent yourself. So if you're currently uh, a hostess at a restaurant, but you're ultimately trying to become a, um, you know, an accountant or you wanna get hired on in a bank or you wanna get hired on in hospitality, just know that you, know, you have to make decisions on, is it, is it stronger for me at this point to note that I'm a student? Um, or is it stronger for me to say, hey, I'm a hostess at uh, you know, Restaurant X? It's really up to you, but you have to make a decision and um, sort of act accordingly. The headline's important though, um, because you should be uh, applying key terms that are related to your field and make it easy for others to define your industry and role within. So it's not a time to be sort of cute and call yourself a guru or a um, queen of. It's much more about, um, you know, who are you and what are you trying, uh, what industry are you trying to break into? So your profile photo, um, I have, they have some do's and don'ts on LinkedIn. Uh, profile photos, not to use icons. Um, uh, it's really best to do a headshot. I know a lot of folks use photos from high school. They use photos where they're cropping themselves out, where there's a dog in the background, uh, cropping themselves out with their, you know, hanging out with their dad or their, or their significant other. But it's really best to be by yourself, have a nice clean um, backdrop, a, a decent quality uh, image, not pixelated and not uh, you know, fuzzy, uh, being well groomed, um, head and shoulders is recommended, plain background, nice angle, something that you are proud of. A lot of people also put a lot of selfies like they took in their car and um, it's okay not ideal. If you can do, if you can follow these principles around the profile photo of do's and don'ts, um, it, it's much better and you'll be much more successful that way. Um, the background, uh, the summary statement of yourself, it's a great place for your soundbite where you can highlight your areas of expertise, the things that you're passionate about, personal anecdotes and things that you are um, trying to achieve, what you hope to achieve. It's a great place to also showcase a little bit of personality um, and talk about things that uh, interest you outside of profession. Um, it's also a good place to state pretty clearly that you're graduating in you know, May of 2017, uh, but you're looking for an internship, you're looking for a summer gig, you're looking to start full-time in the fall. Whatever your language is, this, the summary statement is your opportunity to kind of showcase that and set the stage for those who look at your profile to kind of know where you stand and um, kind of where your current status is and what you're hoping to, to do next. Uh, there's also experience. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we get uh, into the next slide, but um, really looking at your current, it's, it's fine to put wherever you're working now, or if you're uh, maybe volunteering right now, um, you want to definitely showcase your ex expertise. So in your experience section, uh, as you're listing your 
uh, various jobs. You list from the most current to, uh, so start you know, with what you're doing now or what you most did most recently and then back up from there. I don't recommend including high school unless um, you really have nothing else to reference. But you wanna do a start and end date of your employment. You wanna do the name of the employer, title or primary role. So if you were a lifeguard or you were a hostess or you were a bank teller, whatever it is, what is your primary role? And then a one to three sentence narrative summarizing your overall responsibilities or you can do bullet points that outline your core duties. Um, but basically, sum summary and following kind of the format that they have there under projects um, and location and that sort of thing, but definitely uh, being consistent in how you list your previous employment. Uh, there's things on projects. So projects is a great place to highlight um, special curriculum projects like group work or research. Under skills, this is where you can use um, identify sp specific keywords and phrases that are related to your industry. If you're a good presenter, you're a good leader, you're very organized, um, you've got great project management skills, maybe you're a photographer or a graphic designer. These are great ways to you know, list your skills and then your connections can come in and they can actually endorse you specifically for these skills. Um, education, make sure that you list all of the degrees, including um, your community college or any certificates. You don't need to do high school. You can just focus mostly on uh, you know, your bachelor's or if you did community college or certificates or any kind of special um, training, you can do that. Uh, and then your anticipated graduation date. Um, a little bit more on that. Um, your four-year education, your name of your university, in our case, Washington State University, the name of your college, um, name of department, major and minor if you have um, a minor, and then graduation date or anticipated graduation date. Those are the big uh, things to include there. Uh, if you're doing a community college, it would be your name of the community college, the areas of emphasis. So if you were focused on natural resources or you were focused on um, financial planning or you had a communications focus or business focus uh, to go ahead and note your areas of emphasis even if it was just an AA and you focused on core I'm sure you had a couple of electives in there that you could uh, showcase and then also certificates the awarding organization and the year earned and the purpose and a brief description of the certificate and that can include if you've got a formal certificate if you in include uh, went to a uh, you know a Microsoft workshop where you completed um, sensitivity training or cultural diversity training those are things that you're you can definitely include and actually really beef up and, and enhance your LinkedIn profile um, making connections so there are groups and different connections joining groups that are related to your field and interest are really smart so I have a, a lot that are in social media public relations advertising National Communications Associations, Women in Communications, all those sorts of things that are very much related to my field and my field of interest. And then when you are seeking to make connections, be strategic and intentional versus random. So just because you're connected to someone who knows someone, randomly going out there and trying to connect with people um, without providing them any context uh, can basically it just, I don't know if I would say backfire, that's a little strong, but I would say that that I'm personally very cautious when, about um, connecting with people that I don't have any context with. And so even from the last uh, webinar that I, I did on 1.0, I did get some uh, requests for connections and it really helped when they, when they customized the um, request to connect to tell me, hey, I was in your webinar. Then I know that there's a, a legitimate connection and it's not just somebody who's gonna send me a bunch of spam or try to get me to buy a product or try to get, you know, if they're recruiters um, that are trying to either get my students or, or me personally. Uh, I just like to qualify and make sure that my connections are, are people that um, I want to be connected with and who uh, you know, are going to value from their connection to me. Um, so the, the <clears throat> completing your LinkedIn profile, there's, a, there's, there's some schools of thought here on um, you know, having a pretty high percentage rate of, they want you to be, of course, at 100%. I think I'm still at like 95. Uh, but users who have complete profiles are 40 times more likely to receive opportunities through LinkedIn. So um, you want to be, that the all-star status means you have your industry and location, your current position with a description, at least two past positions, education, 
minimum of three skills, a profile photo, and at least 50 connections. That gives you that all-star status. Um, also, uh, it, the value of having a complete profile, 100% uh, um, means that you will fall into this search algorithm that helps, you know, when people are searching for different things, it'll give you a greater chance of being on top of that search result, uh, being having a complete profile, um, having shared and common connections, connections by degree. So your first degree is the, the people who you're directly connected with versus second degree, which is um, friends of friends, and then friends of friends of friends is third degree, and then also shared groups in common. So it shows that you're, um, the industry that you're, uh, following with different groups is, is a shared industry among your connections. So a um, couple more things on that Lifehacker uh, LinkedIn cheat sheet. They have some guidelines also on image size, outline and description for every opportunity to have an image uh, within LinkedIn. How to outreach uh, for recommendations. I know that's something that uh, a lot of people you know, kind of don't know what to do and how do you do it and how do you ask for recommendations? How do you ask for um, referrals and, and uh, you know, validations on skills and expertise. Uh, hidden LinkedIn features that you can use to enhance your profile as well as um, using search engine optimization to maximize those search results within your LinkedIn profile. Some quick tips that you can implement immediately and then also a great uh, section on um, privacy settings and sort of understanding what um, prospective employers are seeing versus, uh, you know, what what you want people who are actually connected to you can see. So really great resource. I'm gonna keep moving on. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Facebook. And so um, Facebook is a, a really important um, place for you to be. It's a, um, you can definitely control your privacy settings and how you uh, rank people who um, are acquaintances versus close friends. But this is an opportunity to leverage the platform for career success and also as a playground for um, you and your closest friends. So if you need to set up a Facebook uh, profile and you don't know how to do it, I do um, recommend going to facebook.com forward slash help. And that has a ton of tutorials on setting up a profile. But let's talk a little bit about um, your reputation on Facebook and uh, definitely different uh, ways to get started here on Facebook. So there's a couple of the, the, the terminology I wanted to make sure I, I shared this. There's the differences between a profile, a page, and a group. So profile is personal, and that's where you invite friends, and uh, it tends to be it's individual. Um, businesses are not allowed to have personal profiles. Uh, this is where you invite, maintain friends. Um, only friends can view your profile. There's no advertising, and you can create pages and groups within a personal profile. A page is um, where businesses can actually create full pages. So if you um, wanted to do a page that link, linked out to your blog or you wanted to do a page that linked out to um, some entrepreneurial or freelance work that you're doing or to a um, maybe a nonprofit that you support or a cause you support, you can create a page for that. And uh, you can have shared administration and some other things uh, and also promote uh, different things and ads. In a group, it tends to be, uh, it can be closed or it can be open, but groups are a great way to network. Uh, Facebook groups happen. Um, I know even my online MA students, they have a Facebook group that um, they, you know, share information. They, they talk about uh, what's going on. They support each other in that Facebook group. Um, but that's another way to really utilize Facebook um, to its fullest. So as a personal profile on Facebook, uh, it's a couple of things. Like considering your reputation, the ways that you behave, people you associate with, information you share, as well as the information others share. That's definitely something to be mindful of in your Facebook profile. Also consider your big picture strategy. What do you need to share to showcase your brand? What other information are you willing to share and what information do you wanna keep private? Uh, for me, I, my Facebook is primarily friends and family. What I'm mostly mindful of is that I, I tend to not, um, you know, take a stand on anything political uh, when things come through uh, where they have the filters for um, supporting different causes or initiatives that come through. Um, I tend to just not participate in those as to not, you know, potentially impact my personal brand. I stay pretty neutral. 
uh, know what is seen by everyone. Um, and so this is the name at the top of your Facebook profile, your Facebook custom uh, URL and username, uh, your current profile photo and your cover photo. That is gonna be seen by everyone. So that's something to be uh, very uh, aware of. Also, I know that a lot of people choose to use like first name, middle name um, or pseudonyms and just be aware that uh, from a searching standpoint that you, you may not be found. And if you wanna be found, you just need to be um, consistent. Uh, I think someone asked me in the last session about pseudonyms and I think that's fine if you want to do pseudonyms, but be consistent and make sure that on your, um, you know, online portfolio and on your resume, if you want to be found, that you make sure that you indicate those pseudonyms um, and make sure they're appropriate uh, on that, uh, on those documents so that if you want to be found, you can be found. And then also just deciding on those privacy settings, how much content do you want to be visible and how much do you want to be private? Um, tips to creating a strong personal brand on Facebook. Uh, so just straight out deleting party photos, um, inappropriate cover photos, uh, status updates you don't want prospective uh, employers to see, update friends lists, remove those that you don't or shouldn't associate with anymore, especially if they tag you in unprofessional photos or videos, and um, update your profile uh, info, your photo, your about, your quotes and links to represent your personal brand and have that continuity of your story. So let's talk about Twitter. Um, Twitter, you can, if you have not set up a Twitter, you're not familiar with Twitter, uh, you can go to support.twitter.com for tutorials on setting up a feed and some best practices there, but I'm gonna highlight a couple of things here. Um, creating a strong personal brand on Twitter. Choosing your Twitter handle carefully is important. If you're a blogger, you can use your blog title, but if it's a uh, personal, you can just do a variation of your name. I, I use at RL Cooney. I've seen people use um, first name, last initial, um, or first initial last, or maybe even their whole name, uh, but variation of your name, depending on what's available. Um, avoid reporting on your every move. So I know that you're at the restaurant, or now you're at the library, or now you're getting your car washed. Before you post, consider, um, is it relevant to your followers? Does it promote your values and ideals? And does it help followers get to know you better? Um, if you want to gain followers and inspire engagement, you can participate in Twitter chats, respond to mentions or shares, and share, tag, and engage. I also, um, I follow, just like in LinkedIn, where you're following groups that are based on your industry, I, I follow a lot of um, industry-based uh, thought leaders, as well as, uh, as groups that are in the social media uh, marketing, communications, and advertising fields. And that way, if I see an article that I think is going to be of interest to my fans and followers, and most of my fans and followers are going to be um, for, you know, my former students or, or colleagues. Um, I do also have a few that if, if I follow them, like social media today, for example, or um, I think of Marketo, if I follow them, they, they tend to follow me, especially if I start to share um, things that are related to my industry. I don't do a ton of uh, original content on Twitter because I, um, I've chosen to, to kind of mostly do a lot of liking and sharing, uh, but that's, that's one of the opportunities as well. Instagram is uh, admittedly my, my weakest point. I have not spent a lot of time on Instagram. Um, I have not used Instagram to its fullest capacity for personal brand, but I did want to share some points uh, that maybe you could get out of it. Um, Instagram is, is really a great way to make connections with your fans and followers. Um, and it's a great way to showcase some really great creativity. If you would like to set up a profile, you can also visit help.instagram.com for tutorials. Uh, as um, I'm just focusing mostly on the bigger picture of how to create strong personal brand in these channels. So what they say about creating a strong personal brand is to find your niche. And so in Instagram, it's really more about um, different areas of, of uh, interest that people follow, you know, dog lovers and photographers and, um, you know, I don't know, people who like to cook and bake and that sort of thing. So it's sort of like Pinterest is that way as well. Uh, setting yourself apart from everyone who, um, so as a way to showcase your personality, what are you good at? What do you enjoy doing? What are your brand's main purpose? So if I was really serious about Instagram, perhaps I would do something on yoga I, or I would do something on uh, my passion for economic uh, revitalization in small communities, or maybe I would do something on the platform of substance abuse prevention among teens. Um, I might try to bring that in. 
Um, use your face, not your logo. People connect with people, not brand logos. Uh, interact, so replying to commenters and comment on their photos, so that reciprocation is really recommended. Uh, build your profile, keep it consistent, and make sure that it is, you know, with your about and your photos and your whole personal brand story, that that's consistent in your about and, and uh, your sort of tags. Um, they recommend using hashtags as a way to connect with fans and followers. Also, uh, of course, being authentic and being yourself is very important. So um, I thought that this stat was really interesting. As of early 2015, Instagram has registered more than 300 million unique users since its inception. It's only five years old, and that's 12 million more than Twitter. So that's pretty insane. 57% of those users access the application at least once a day, and 90% of the user base is between the ages of 18 and 35. So um, I thought that was really fantastic. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is online portfolio. And the online portfolio, I think, can be a little bit daunting. I think people feel like, well, I'm not a photographer, I'm not a graphic designer, I'm not a painter. Um, what am I going to showcase on my online portfolio? Well, I'm going to show you what you're going to showcase. Um, there's some different tools that you can use. Uh, Wix.com is a fantastic uh, open source content management system, or CMS. And uh, you can create a free, um, beautiful uh, online portfolio site um, on, on Wix. It does have a little ad at the bottom, but it's not obtrusive. Um, the only thing, if you want to do a unique URL that is your name um, that doesn't have Wix.com built into the URL, you do have to um, upgrade, but that's really it. Otherwise, you have a, a tremendous wealth and, and access to all sorts of things within that tool. Uh, WordPress, WordPress.com is free. WordPress.org is something you purchase. Um, it's not that expensive. I think last time I checked, it's about $35, and you also get a URL with that. And you can, um, where, they, where they get their money is in uh, uh, purchasing their, um, their, their templates and upgrading in, in their templates. So, um, But WordPress, a little bit more cumbersome, a little less user-friendly, but a very good tool, especially if you want to blog. Uh, Weebly is the next one. Weebly is a lot like Wix. Uh, it's very user-friendly, also has a free interface and... Um, some great layouts, really clean, they even have a portfolio section. And then um, Foursquare, which I personally have not played with, but I've heard some good things. Uh, Foursquare is another one that you can check out. So there are many others, but those are four that I, I thought I'd pull out and highlight. Um, so the work that you showcase to produce um, should be the type of work that you want to be hired to produce. So definitely think about that. So your online portfolio. It's a great way to showcase your biography in a more detailed way, a little bit less um, you know, structured than on the LinkedIn uh, platform. Uh, skills, qualifications, past coursework projects, um, both uh, in, in the classroom and out of the classroom. Um, great place for, that you can showcase and really tighten up your uh, display of work that is relevant to the field that you wanna go into. Um, I recommend the following pages uh, that uh, and you're getting started as you're just starting to build the your about your skills and passions courses samples of work resume a contact me page with a form um, some tips update your portfolio often use the blog feature as a way to showcase things you're actively working on um, and as a way to keep things fresh and show that you're engaged and and also shows a little bit of writing skills which is useful in many many job um, prospects giving um, they, uh, an online portfolio really gives an insight into how, um, well, it gives you an opportunity to really showcase how, how you um, created a project, the background on that project, a little bit of context of who was involved, what your role was on the project. So it's really important that in, within your samples in particular that you actually um, give context and, give, and showcase a little bit more on um, not just here's my beautiful piece, but what was my role in it? Because most projects, uh, especially as you get into business, um, rarely have just one person involved. There's multiple people at the table, and it's, and it's fine to showcase the beautiful end product, but also indicate what your role was on that. Um, avoid long intros. Do summary statements. Uh, encourage action. You can create that contact form. Give easy access to your social media links. And then also... Um, Creative uh, Blocks uh, recommends uh, keeping it very clean and simple. So I found a, um, an example that I thought was really balanced, and I thought it was really a great example of someone uh, who is just kind of getting started in life. And this is from Skill Crush. 
And um, this individual is Magali. And I don't know this person, so FYI, but I, what I liked about her approach, and this actually is a very similar look to what Weebly and Wix has. She has a home experiences about and a resume. Um, so this is just her homepage. So this is her about. She talks about her experience. Um, she has experience in the hospitality industry. She talks a little bit about her background, gives a real personal touch on kind of what her story was, where she was, where she is now, and where she hopes to be. So um, really follows that, that sort of um, formula of introducing herself and showcasing. Now she chose not to include a photo. I wanted to point that out. Um, she has a photo uh, deeper within her site, but I think her photo, she chose to just do a little circle photo at the bottom. Um, and I think that's fine. You don't have to make this a big showcase about yourself. You might, uh, you know, pick a theme and, and just kind of roll with that, something that really uh, showcases, who, you know, who you are. So she's got Paris here. Um, she, she talks about who I am, very, very much uh, consolidated bio, who she is. She's a, an online marketer. Um, she talks about what her um, sort of philosophy uh, it is and how she wants to be portrayed. So she's creating her brand profile right here and she's creating the voice in the way that she wants to be described. And then this is just an example of her resume. Very clean, very simple use of lines and bolds and bullets and, and eye towels and a little bit of color um, to uh, outline kind of who she is um, and her background, her skills, her expertise, and basically her resume. Um, Oh, sorry, that was the last of Magdalene. Uh, but there's others out there. And then, and I think um, Magdalene is a great example of, um, of, of just that simple initial online portfolio that you want to develop. And then I just had some final words on um, packaging yourself for the future. Uh, this is, comes from uh, Luann Tierney, who is a cybersecurity marketing executive. And she talks about um, the importance of developing that brand um, being a good communicator, um, look and act confidently through your profile photos and through your social channels. Um, of course, she has other things like being physically active, um, you know, being proactive on writing your life goals, um, being determined and being uh, very proactive in, in everything that you're going to do. Um, and I just encourage you to uh, take this slow, but be intentional, make a plan um, and start to build things out. Start with your personal brand and getting that, um, your story down and your bio, um, get your photo, um, start building your, your social media profiles, even if you don't have a lot to contribute right now, just getting those built, um, figuring out how you want to be found and when, when found, what does it look like? And then also starting to build that online portfolio so you have a place for people to land and showcase all that you are capable of. So that's it. Um, I think we're going to get into questions. So Josh, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Cool. Thanks, Rebecca. So our first question is from Jolyn, and she would like to know on LinkedIn, how far back do you suggest on going with past employment? Well, that's a great question. So, so I have about 20 years in the field and I was kind of wondering like, should I still be putting my internships down? And so my, my answer to that is that I think you want to go back as far as, uh, like I wouldn't go to high school. Um, I think you can, you, I probably, if you're, if you're well established, if you have more than 10 years experience, I would say you don't need to get, get into your internships unless you think they're pretty cool. And, and you know, maybe they were, if they were overseas, for example, they were a study abroad internship or they, uh, you know, worked for, you worked for a pretty cool, like well-known company. But if you were just like hanging out at Von Housen Auto Parts, like I was, um, where in Sacramento, California, it has less value. So I tend to, I think I would just say evaluate whether or not it's really relevant, um, but mostly focus on things that um, you wanna have, I think one of the, LinkedIn said to have no less than two. Um, so if you have just a few, um, go ahead and mention just the few, but as you start to get more established and more experienced, you can start to drop off those ones um, that were early on and maybe not as relevant. But once you started working professionally full time and you hold, held a position with title, um, I, I'd start there. Um, most of the resumes that I look at go pretty far back. Um, they just don't go as far back as internships and uh, you know certainly um, part time stuff over the summer when you were in college. 
Hope that answers it. Next question. Thanks. If one does freelance work, should it be kept separate from a professional profile? No, 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 no. I, I have a section that on consulting, um, uh, a section on um, even like this kind of thing, guest lectures and webinars. Um, absolutely include your freelance as part of your profile because it's also a great way um, to kind of minimize gaps that you might have in your resume, especially as you, a lot of students, you know, that, or, or even, you know, new mamas, whatever, they take some time off. Freelance is a great way to fill those gaps. So absolutely include it in, as part of your overall profile. Even if you say, you know, um, 20, 2012 to present, um, freelance is absolutely relevant and keep it in there. What are your thoughts on an open Instagram account? Open Instagram. I think it's fine if you are if you're um, if if you'd show it to your mama and your grandma. I say it's fine to have it open. But if there's anything in there that that you think could um, you know question put you know put a put a red flag for a potential employer or potential client or something that you feel is a little bit questionable, I I would um, tighten up those privacy settings. But if you feel pretty good and confident that what you're putting out there is something that you're you're um, not going to be embarrassed about, that you'd be fine if um, if, if anyone saw it, then I think you can keep it open. It's just uh, something to assess on, on your own. Thanks. All right, and our last question. So while she's answering this, if you have any more, feel free to type away. Yes. Ken would like to know, he's curious about your recommendation for privacy settings on LinkedIn. Is there anything your contacts can see that the public should not see? Um, only if I would, I would just be cautious of like address, um, phone number, things like that, that you don't want people to see birthday, perhaps. Um, those are the things that I would, you know, your basic privacy settings that you don't want general public to see. Like I, I wouldn't want people to see my phone number. Good Lord. Um, I wouldn't want people to know where, you know, where I live. Um, so you have to be a little bit mindful of that, especially if you upload documents like resumes, you might want to strip that information out so that you, you preserve your, just your personal safety privacy um, comes to mind. But most of the things that you're going to have out there on LinkedIn are going to be um, pretty public friendly. Just, uh, just that personal contact information, things like birthdays, phone numbers, um, addresses, certainly social security numbers and, and that sort of thing. But also um, the only other thing I would, I would maybe caution is if you if you plan on having any samples because LinkedIn has a ton of features now where you can have links out to your portfolio items and that sort of thing. Just make sure that if it's something that um, like maybe you did a project that you used Nike or you used um, McDonald's or another major brand and you just want to make sure you put disclaimers on there saying, you know, this was for a class project or this was used for educational purposes, you know, to, that sort of thing just to make sure that um, you know, you're, you're providing proper citation and attribution where needed. Hope that answers that. Thanks. One more. With putting all of this information and all of your work out there, are there any concerns about a lot of um, identity theft or stolen online information? Uh, kind of going back and piggybacking on what I just said about, um, you know, personal information, just being really, really mindful of having things like your uh, you know, your, your city, your address, your, um, your phone number, protecting yourself on that level is smart. Um, and, and, and something, I, I think identity theft, as long as you're not doing a lot, you know, putting credit card information or putting your social security number out there. Um, I think, you know, being very mindful, of course, of not putting any of that information. Um, even I, I think of an example of my, you know, a daughter getting her, her, uh, driver's permit and posting it online and us going right away and taking it down because it had personal information on there that she didn't really think about uh, things like her address or or things like her birthday and, and those are things that um, you definitely want to you know on Facebook it's okay um, when it's your friends that know about your birthday and that sort of thing but just be just be mindful be really aware of those of those hot button items um, that that can be um, misused that you're protecting yourself um, in general public settings. Any more questions? That looks about it. So Josh, do you, um, this is posted online also, and right, the, 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 the taped presentation? It will be, yes. It has to go through closed captioning. 
before. So yeah, so if you want to um, go back and see, uh, especially the LinkedIn slides, there's so much details, but, but again, uh, I have links referenced, so you can go and, and look them up yourself um, and, and check out these great resources that are out there that really provide some good content. I think that's it though. Cool. Well, I would like to thank you again, Rebecca, for um, putting on this series for us, and I'm sure everyone else would love to thank you as well. As for those who attended, I just copied and pasted a link into the chat box. If you would mind taking a few seconds to um, submit a few answers to the survey about how you felt tonight's program went and what we can do to bring you more programming in the future. I would like to remind you that next Wednesday, we have our last program of the year. It is Cinco de Mayo with Chef Jamie Callison, the executive chef for Washington State University. And he will be um, teaching us how to um, prepare for a Cinco de Mayo feast. So please feel free to register for that at connections.wsu.edu. And again, I would like to thank you for attending and have a good night.